I just want to show you guys this document really quick. I hope it's quick. Because I'm not an astrophysicist. I can't explain half of what's in this document. But I think, in a way, that's kind of the point. Because there's a huge divide between the science that is typically generally accepted and known by the public and then the things that are being worked on in classified top secret programs. So this document came out last month. It was in response to a FOIA request of Mr. Stephen Aftergood of the Federation of American Scientists to the Defense Intelligence Agency regarding any products that were produced under the Advanced Aerospace Threat and Identification Program contract. If you're not familiar with what that program is, you may recall that back during December 2017, it came out buried deep within the Defense Department budget. There was a $22 million program called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which even the New York Times admits was almost impossible to find, which is how the Pentagon wanted it. And they talked about how this was a program initially largely funded by Senator Harry Reid, which, as most of you know, is just a real stand-up example of a human being. And then a lot of the money from the program actually went to his billionaire entrepreneur and longtime friend, Robert Bigelow, who contracts with NASA for various whatever. But <laughs> what this FOIA request ended up giving this guy is a list of projects that they were working on, research projects through this program, that reads more like something out of a Harry Potter movie mixed with a Star Trek episode. It is not the kind of stuff that if you talk about it, people take you seriously. It's more the kind of stuff that if you talk about it, people act like you should have a tinfoil hat on while you do. And yet this is something that the government was spending millions of dollars on. And obviously I don't have the requisite scientific background to explain to you every implication of what these projects could mean. But I think just the titles alone are pretty informational. So they gave him this document, which was actually a letter that was sent out to Senator John McCain and Senator Jack Reed. It talks about how there are 38 reports associated with the DIA's involvement in the program, which just that phrase alone makes me think there should be more FOIA requests to other agencies, since obviously it just infers that there may be other agencies involved in this program and that it went further. And it says all are unclassified or for official use only, except for Attachment 37, which is a secret, no foreign version of Attachment 38, state of the art and evolution of high energy laser weapons. This is what I'm talking about. This is a very interesting document. So let's just get right to this, okay? So you have inertial electrostatic confinement fusion, advanced nuclear propulsion for manned deep space missions. Pulsed high-powered microwave technology. Do you see what I'm starting to say here? Okay. Space access by a company called Hypertech. Advanced space propulsion based on vacuum space-time metric engineering by Dr. Hal Putoff of EarthTech International. And I just want to point out, in case that name rings a bell, it's because, as you might recall, he was funded through the Defense Intelligence Agency and the CIA to do parapsychology research at SRI, the Stanford Research Institute, back in the 70s and 80s, where he eventually became director of something called Operation Stargate. And not to get off on a whole tangent about that, but I do not personally believe, through all the research that I've done, that the public has ever been made fully aware of what that project actually was about. I think the movie Men Who Stared Goats, which was supposedly made based on that project, basically makes a lighthearted romp out of something that was much more serious with much bigger implications than what that movie even remotely skimmed the surface of. And so I'll just leave it at that. Then you have biosensors and biomems. And I didn't know what a biomem was. I had to look that one up. But it stands for biomedical or biological microelectromechanical systems. And here's a handy dandy Venn diagram of what that looks like. So you have everything from micro needles to implantable micro electrodes to organ on a chip, which sounds super fun, miniaturized biosensors and micro reactors. So yeah, so just know about that. Then you start getting into Harry Potter territory with invisibility cloaking, which is something that, I mean, it's come out before that they've been working on that for a really long time. 
The military has seen the so-called quantum stealth technology. It works by bending the light around an object. But it still sounds like a Harry Potter movie, just to say the phrase, invisibility cloaking. But it gets better because then you have traversable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy by a guy who also works for Earth Tech International, presumably with Dr. Hal Putoff. So when people talk about stuff like that, and then everyone else makes jokes at their expense because it sounds like a Star Trek episode, like I said, well, here's a $22 million Pentagon program working on that exact research. And this, by the way, is from, like, that pro- that program was supposedly shuttered in 2012. So this is stuff that is at least over half a decade old, if not older. Then you've got high-frequency gravitational wave communications, role of superconductors in gravity research, anti-gravity for aerospace applications, once again out of Earth tech, the vague but horrifying field effects on biological tissues, positron aerospace propulsion, concepts for extracting energy from the quantum vacuum, again at Earth tech, an introduction to the statistical Drake equation. That one is the closest that they ever get to really making it sound like it has to do with actual, what most people would consider aliens. Basically, the Drake equation has to do with the odds of finding intelligent life in the universe. Then you've got Maverick Inventor versus Corporate Inventor, which is really just the least interesting title on here, so it's probably actually the most interesting. (laughs) Biomaterials, metamaterials for aerospace applications. Then you've got Warp Drive, Dark Energy, and the Manipulation of Extra Dimensions. That's a title on here. Dark Energy and the Manipulation of Extra Dimensions. You know, when you mention stuff like that, or people who do videos and talk about the technology they're working on at CERN, where CERN scientists even talk about extra dimensions and the manipulation of energies and things like that. What are we looking for? Things like dark matter, dark energy, supersymmetry, uh, quantum black holes, large extra dimensions. That's not speculation on the part of me. That is straight from the mouth of a physicist literally there. If you talk about that, you get called a crazy person. Here it is in a declassified government document that they were obviously spending money to work on those concepts. Technological approaches to controlling external devices in the absence of limb-operated interfaces, materials for advanced aerospace platforms, metallic glasses, aerospace applications of programmable matter, metallic spintronics, space communication implications of quantum entanglement and non-locality, aneutronic fusion propulsion from Lockheed Martin, cockpits in the era of breakthrough flight, Or how about this? Cognitive limits on simultaneous control of multiple unmanned spacecraft. It's pretty obvious to at least infer from that one what they're talking about is being able to control UAVs with your mind. And I guess how many can you control at one time? (laughs) Detection and high resolution tracking of vehicles at hypersonic velocities. Aneutronic fusion propulsion too. Laser light craft nanosatellites. Magneto-hydrodynamics, air-breathing propulsion, and power for aerospace applications, also by Lockheed Martin. Quantum computing and utilizing organic molecules and automation technology. (laughs) Quantum tomography of negative energy states in the vacuum. Ultracapacitors as energy and power storage devices. I mean, a lot of these titles just sound like Doc Brown and Marty McFly are going to get in the DeLorean and go back in time. Again, just the fact that they're spending millions of dollars on it should tell you something. Negative mass propulsion, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the last two have to do with the state of the art and evolution of high-energy laser weapons, the kind which, if you talk about, again, someone asks you where your tinfoil hat is. Obviously, it's something they've not only been working on, but there's a version of the paper that is that was at one time classified secret no foreign, which is your second to highest level of classification that exists that we know of. I feel like what these titles tell me is that the technocracy has progressed scientifically way beyond not just the five cents reality they want the majority of everyone to spend all of their time focused on under a spiritually dead scientific dictatorship, but the scientific dictatorship has progressed beyond the point of attempting to conquer the neuron and the genome which is the physical fabric of you and I, to the point of manipulating the very fabric of space-time? 
itself on apparently all levels. And not just the quote-unquote outer space that everyone thinks of is distant and far, far away, but all of space, which is technically everything that's around us all the time, which is an important distinction because I don't think a lot of people think of space that way when they think of space. It really is all the dimensions around you at any given time. The air in front of your face is space. So we're talking about dimensions now that transcend what you can perceive in your five senses. This is the level that this kind of science is at. Curious question for you. I don't know if you ever saw Stranger Things. Have you guys paid attention to this? On the show, they have a Department of Energy, and they spend a lot of time investigating <laughs> a parallel universe. <laughs> what can you tell us about that? I can tell you, first of all, that I've never seen it. Secondly, I, I believe this... Uh, fictional DOE laboratory uh, was operating in the 1980s. You can draw whatever inference you wish from that. Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. Third, I will note that actually we do work in parallel universes. <laughs> we do work in parallel universes. Well, actually, this is the level this kind of science was apparently at years ago. And I'm assuming if they put this in the public domain, it's because this is old hat. And they don't really care if people know. Plus, they're probably banking on the fact as I've said before, that most people aren't going to know what half of this stuff means anyways, or the different ways in which it could be used and applied. Just like the average person has no idea why we're going to add a branch of our military that's going to be the Space Force. But obviously there's a lot more to space and all of the dimensions of it, not just what you can see and perceive, than most of us have any idea about, which is by design obviously. So I just wanted to show you that this document exists. Because it's not a throwaway Star Trek episode, it's actually a real declassified document coming out of our Defense Intelligence Agency. And if that's the stuff they were working on over half a decade ago, then take a guess on what they might be working on now.